What's going on you guys this time Dan and Apple here we want to show you guys some of the creatures that Apple experienced during the construction of our house in Northeast yeah. Thailand um, for those of you that follow the channel you guys already know we're building a house over there and Apple was over there overseeing the construction uh, she was there for actually seven months and I had to come back to work and then I went back again. So she's encountered a whole bunch of really interesting wildlife. Of course, mostly snakes, but uh, she captured um, most of them on video on her phone and I was able to upload HD video off her iPhone. And I wanna show you guys some of this stuff and I wanna to talk to Apple and have her talk to you and kinda of tell you guys what it's like living out in the sticks in Thailand. It's a whole different, uh, it's a whole different ball game over yeah. there. You see a lot of crazy stuff. And of course, when I go over there, I'm only there for a very short period of time, mm -hmm. a week or two at a time. So I don't get a chance to actually put in days and weeks and months to see all these crazy things. I see some crazy things, but I'm not there all the time. And a lot of stuff happens the longer you're there. So anyway, so you're over there. Yes. Um, the weather was... It was so hot, right? That at that time it's like a summer season it's like a it's hot and you sweat a lot hot and humid but there was some unseasonal rain yes so it should have been sort of the dry season but there was rain coming yeah. and the rain brings out uh, the frogs and mm -hmm. the bugs and all that stuff is food for uh, prey it's a little yeah. bit higher up in the food chain so it starts getting really interesting because a lot of stuff starts coming out so one of the most common snakes that you see are the redneck keelbacks so yes. those are over there a lot you see a lot of that stuff uh, they're usually hunting frogs correct yes they're usually looking for food um, as you guys know if you have an internet connection this is the one that everybody has to throw it in there that they're venomous and poisonous mm -hmm. uh, they get their toxin from the their diet of, of toads yeah so um, but over there they don't really consider them dangerous more like a garter snake kind of just a common snake that's around like a water snake yeah because they they have seen them often and they, they know that um, the venom or the poisonous or whatever they, they, that is has is not as dangerous as the cobra right so they treat them just like, oh that's Right, 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 right. Like yeah. So that's one of the most common snakes um, crawling through the grass, uh, usually during the daytime. Uh, yes. But sometimes daytime, at night also daytime. they're yes. sticking their heads down in the in the holes and, and looking for toad things. Toads yeah. mostly, yeah. <laughs> and some fish and tadpoles and, and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Yes. So also, what else? Um, this time you saw a lot of kukri snakes yes. actually. Yes, more than probably you've ever remembered seeing mm -hmm. right yeah um apple wasn't a snake enthusiast uh prior to her meeting me not, not really <laughs> right so so with uh, us together of course uh, a lot of knowledge is rubbed off on her and so now she's able to id things you know much better yeah. and she knows the species that rank high up on my favorites list so she will target those and make sure she gets photo and video mm -hmm. anytime she comes across yes. that stuff yes. so lots of kukri snakes um, that one in the hole was pretty weird it was hard for me to ID because you sent it to me through Facebook Messenger and it didn't come out HD so for me on my side I couldn't really see what yeah. it was Pattaya's Koros um, very common common over there yes but you know this this kind of snakes um we will see them active during daytime sure. like uh, they like to like fast through across the road right, like right, that right. so the the one that uh, we saw uh this couple the neighbor couple they they were on their motorbike mm. on the way to the rice farm and all of a sudden I said, oh, apple, apple. 
of a foreign snake is going to that boat right there. Come and look. So and then I was rushed there, and her husband would be able to catch the snakes. So it turned out is um, Pattaya's chorus. So, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know everybody in that village they know me and my fascination with <laughs> reptiles and snakes, you know, in particular. So whenever they see any. They're yelling, if they're within distance, yelling distance, they're, they're screaming for us um, to come and, you know, catch it, see it, whatever we want to do with it. Yeah. So that's really cool. So that was interesting. Um, bronzeback snakes, also yes. quite common, active during the day. Yeah. See them a lot. Also hunting for frogs. Yes, mostly. and uh, yeah, and the one that um, I saw this one that I was be able to capture is, is actually hunting and eating the frogs. Hmm. So. And when these snakes do grab the frogs, the frogs squeak. They make that squeaking noise, and then yeah. that kind of alerts you mm. that there's something going on, and it's usually yeah. a snake that's uh, you know taken down a frog. So, the squeaking only lasts for sometimes only 15 20 seconds 30 seconds so you gotta move <laughs> yes. fast because eventually the frog goes down the throat and it mm -hmm. doesn't make any more yeah. noise so it's like on a timer if you can find it if it's close enough and you can get to it so also uh the flying snake at the temple that was oh yeah pretty that's, trippy. <laughs> yeah that's this was very interesting uh those i think those time is around new year's new year's eve or new year's day um, our whole family went to this uh, temple that, um, you know, we want to make some merit and do some good things and then uh, getting some, some blessing from the monk. And during the time that we've been sitting there and do all this and then everybody, they sometimes they get bored or they try to stay awake. Mm. And then my eye was go right at this little thing. It's like a wiggling in the air like this, a little bit, a little bit, and I thought, Oh, is that a snake? And then I a little bit go up like this, and then I have my camera run the whole time. It's turned it out. It's um. It was a flying snake. Yeah. Or not a so chrysopelea. Or it's not very a... cute, very interesting. But my camera can't zoom in so good. So, but I got some um video. Yeah, it, <laughs> it very hard to ID, but when you see the way it's moving and combined with some of the body structure and that. Definitely Ornata. That's yeah. kind of how they do their little hunting. Yeah, hunt it seems like, oh, I'm here too at the temple. <laughs> <laughs> just weird, yeah, just it's, weird it's coincidence, weird. Uh -huh. timing, location, the whole thing's kind of bizarre. <laughs> and then uh, Boiga, Sainia, there's a lot of those. Yes. This is like, they're, they seem to be my favorite around the village. The area is like a, I have seen quite lots of them and I like them because they're not aggressive they're just like a, they just go roaming around the branches and the body is thin and small and then I can I can tell them I can ID them immediately right that moment that oh that's that's a snake so yeah 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 so and plus here in the hobby they're you know quite yeah. quite uh, admired and, and revered so yeah. you know people really like them and um, it's just cool to see that yeah. stuff in the I wild. I see them they like to hunt at night time. Yeah, they're definitely active yeah. at night and usually hunting for amphibians and, and lizards mm -hmm. in particular. So, you know, the house geckos are around your house, but obviously house geckos are also out in the forest. So you see them up in the right. trees and, yes. and um, you know, they're usually not super active whether, you know, of course they're nocturnal as well, but they're not an active animal even at night. They just sort of sit. And so... Um, that's what the snakes are after. Yes. So tell me about this other night encounter with this, uh, this cobra. Okay. That cobra was, is like a, things that come out like a, like, mm, I, I wasn't ready for it. Yeah. I was on a motorbike and, um, we were drove to drop off one of my, um, nephews. I got two nephews. So both with me. So one in the front and one in the back. We went through this road and then we dropped off one nephew already. And then on the way out from that road, we saw this big snake. It's like, a, it's, it's slow, not fast at all. It's take its time to cross the, to cross the road. 
And then I looked at it, and then I thought, this could be the water snake. At that one, the common that we always see. Yeah. I said, that could not be. And then I looked closer, uh, and then I can ID that was a cobra. Mm. And then I don't know what to do. I don't have any much light. All I have is my phone and the light in front of the motorbike. And the headlight. Yeah. And then uh, his car is went into a man house. He got this, he lit the hut in lit the hut in front of his house, and then um, I feel like I have to tell him because I don't want this snake to to do some bad thing with someone. So I yell, and then I, I happen to know his name, and of course he came up, and then he said, "I said bring your bring your flashlight. I think I I see some." A cobra right here so he rushed down and then he's oh what should I do what should I do I said shine your light on your snake please I want to see it and uh, of course I think <laughs> about you I want to have some a little bit of material or some something to capture it right yeah, that sure. moment so I'd be able to capture it and then um, yeah we both I did it's a cobra because it's got some kind of new leather or something is behind mm. hood so the so the guy the guy comes out and he sees sees the snake. Yeah. And and you were you got your video material and he yeah, just kind of I just took pushed off. it away and yeah. it went the other direction and mm -hmm. everybody was good. Yes. And then the anhydrous plumbea, the water snake, active day and night, very common. Mm -hmm. The little green. Oh yeah, like, like yellow a belly. yellow belly. Yeah. That is a lot. Yeah, a lot. There's so <laughs> many right. around the village. Yeah. Yeah. So also very common. Um, active during the daytime and the nighttime usually around water but um not always this one came up by the house kind of lost yeah this one kind of lost <laughs> so, kind of kind of crazy stuff and uh, my mom got two dogs every time when every time that things that quite a bit dangerous come close uh, like uh, underneath the house or something they will bark they will let us know that oh, things here mm -hmm. like snakes they will bark, bark, bark. They have a weird barks that we can tell that, uh oh, we gotta check this out. So sure enough, sometimes scorpions, sometimes the um, millipedes, sometimes snakes. So. Okay, and one of the coolest things that I thought that that you shared with me in the in the videos was the the baby Malayan oh, crate. Yes. That was really cool. Yeah. Um, that night we went out with my mom. We looking for some little frogs, you know, to, for correcting them. And then uh, we went out to this um, not so far from our house. So it's got some big fish pond. It's belong to the village. It's belong to everybody in the village. And then close by, it's got some chicken um, chicken coop. Yeah. And um. And then we were looking on the ground with our torts and all that and then um i saw this little snake came out like it's so f it's fast and slow and then it's act a little bit weird and then i thought oh that snake very interesting but the phone that i brought that night is happened to be our small oh, phone, phone yeah. so i don't have a good phone to film it but at least i got some um, material on that and then when I look closer, and I think, oh, this is gotta be the crate. Malayan crate. Yeah, yeah. the the type that black and white colors, yeah, yeah, not yeah. not yellow and black that yeah. like we always see. Sure, sure. So I think, and I never see this small before, and I think somehow this gotta be the baby. Oh yeah, yeah. that's really cool. I never, never seen a it's baby. It's pretty like long, that. long, but small, smaller than this, like a half. Half of my pinky. Really thin. But yeah, long. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. So what about this this other snake that you saw that crawled out from the pile of wood right there underneath the house? Oh, okay. That one I never see it before also. And then it went right through underneath the truck on the crack of the rubber. And then I tried to... So it was super tiny. Yeah, it's, it's small also, but... When I try to um, pick it up with uh, the snake hook, try to relocate it, and it is did some weird thing. It's like a, the tail is curling. Yeah, it's twist, curling twisted up tail. the tail. Yeah. yeah, so 
And that's how you know that that is not something that mm-hmm. you are familiar with. And, yeah. And very small. Um, it's it's t- difficult to get bit by that snake because it's so tiny, but still need to be very, yeah. very careful. It's like a greenish color. It's got some black dot, a little bit like a, it's just perfect space on yeah. that black dot yeah, yeah, in yeah, the yeah. body. So. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, and I never seen one of those before. And underneath the tail is different color from the belly also. Mm, mm, mm. So. So and then you let that snake go. Oh yes, in another, of course. Another yeah. area. Yeah. Ah oh, man, a lot of stuff that I missed. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then when I was there, we got the big crate, yeah. of course, the big um, the big banded crate. Yes. That was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Also a very big, yeah. big one, uh, a bit bigger than what we have seen in the past um but you gotta be careful with those guys mm-hmm. they're really challenging to control with a hook and and all yeah, that kind of thing yeah they active so, during the night so they're kind of chirping at you yeah during the day they're pretty pretty yeah. placid and don't really yeah. care somehow what's some going. stories said they like to catch the light like a, your fresh light or something they just go right at it <laughs> yeah well, if you see one at night and you're sticking your flashlight up to it, of course. The light's <laughs> <Yeah. out. laughs> so, and then the uh, insects, scorpions. Yes. Right? And didn't yeah, something happen to you when you were young with a scorpion? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this one is not the, the black beaker one. This one is the, the, the brown, smaller one. The one that... Somehow that one, when it sting you... That one more hurt than the black one. Right. It's more painful. So I was with my family, of course. I can't remember how old, maybe five year, years old. You know, sleeping in my bed. And then I found something crawl in here a little bit. And I just go like that in my sleep. And then before I know it, something stung me right here on my lips, underneath my lips right here. And oh boy, it was painful. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, and um, my mom, I was screaming, and everybody got up, and then my mom said, and then, and then she shook on my blanket, and all that is yes, that scorpion, <laughs> and then my lips start to swollen. Yeah. <laughs> only underneath is like crazy. And, like, that, and that's how you got your your lips today. Uh, because <laughs> <laughs> people pay for stuff like that. Oh, These well. women pay for stuff like that. So. <laughs> but it's, I don't know if it's going to be worth to try it or not. But yeah. So That's I got crazy. one right, right on my lips. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. So let's see. And then lots of frogs, tree frogs, toads, all that kind of stuff. And the cat. The cat was... Um, I had a chance at the at the end of its captivity with us to interact briefly with the cat. Um, so I'll, I'll summarize it real quick. Um, one of the, one of the local people in the village, uh, his dogs were barking at night. He went outside, let the dogs out. There was a family of Asian leopard cats that were attacking the chickens in the chicken coop. Yes. So the dogs went out there and and went crazy, chased away uh, whatever cats could be chased away, and they cornered a kitten. And uh, the dogs didn't hurt the kitten, and the guy uh, took the kitten and put it in a cage. And then word slowly kind of got out and around that this guy had a kitten. Now... Uh, it's normal for the villagers to eat these cats. Um, yeah. Pretty much they will, they eat anything because they're poor people, so everything is kind of fair game. So, um, word spread. Her brother found out first. Her brother told her about the cat. Um, she asked the brother to go, go find the guy and talk to him and ask the guy if he, you know, what he was going to do with it. And... Um, told him that uh, his sister would be interested in taking the cat if he was willing to give it up. So Apple went over there the next day, I believe, and talked to the guy. The guy said he would let the cat go to her if she promised not to eat it. (laughs) So, of course, 
she wasn't going to eat it, but no. she still was concerned what what the um, the final outcome would be with the cat. So the guy said, basically make me an offer. And Apple said, I don't know how, I have no idea how much to offer you. How much do you want for it? And it ended up coming down to like about $7. So Apple got the cat, and got the kitten. And to me, in the photos and stuff that I saw, it looked to be maybe... 10 weeks old or something like that. This is a small variety of, of, of cat. Uh, from my understanding, this is where the Bengal cat originates from. This is the wild part of the, the wild component of the Bengal cat. And um, I was kind of hoping it'd be young enough for us to possibly tame down or whatever. <laughs> to buy no feet. <laughs> yeah, but it was older than that and it was already pretty wild. And it would... Um, attack and bluff mm -hmm. and spit and everything else when you would offer it food so basically um, nobody was sure what to do with it so they were gonna wait until I got there and then I was gonna decide what to do with it so uh, the cat had grown quite a lot by the time I got there um, and I made the decision that we were going to let it go by the time I got there, the cat had already put on a lot of size. It was eating fish and mice and rats and things that were, were normally being found in the surrounding area, which is normally part of its diet. So it was fully weaned and, and ready to go. And um, so we, on the, the last day when we decided we were going to release the cat at night, we gave it yeah. a nice full meal mm -hmm. and we took it out into the jungle and we let it go. Um, the video you can see, it, the video looks a bit rough, but the cat was very, very wild. I mean, this was a wild animal, uh, biting, kicking, scratching, and all this. So it was a challenge to get it out of that weird cage with the bizarre little door, hatch door. <laughs> but um, finally got it out, and we released it, and hopefully it's doing well. Uh, we released it somewhat close to our house, um, but out far enough to where it's wild near some water and so it has access to food and that sort mm -hmm, of thing so mm -hmm. yeah yeah we just kind of you know we we did that and for other stuff um you guys got your fish from the river for food yes um pretty much around there they have like a um you know river going through right canals farm and, and all that canals and uh, you know we we like a farmer and then we do some fishing like a fisherman and then sometimes when we done with the rice farm season and then um and in the summertime is the water level is like a drop down a lot and then it's easy to catch the fish so like a, a lot of like a group of guys or ladies also of course sometimes they will come together and then catch the fish and then they can sell, they sell, they can bring home to eat, and then they bring home to eat for food. So. And everybody kind of shares it? Yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah, um, sometimes... I, I experienced it one time mm -hmm. when I had first met you and went yeah. over there and visited. Yeah. <laughs> they got me down into the mud and doing something like that. Yeah. It was pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. it's mixing um, amount of fish and different type of uh, freshwater fish, of course. Um, you know, sometimes they fall big one like... Um, um, crown knife fish, and snakeheads. Um, snakeheads and some um, uh, catch different kind of catch fish right right so, right yeah. and for me I'm coming with a whole different perspective because you know I used to work in a in a pet store I used to be in charge of you know all the fish tanks and there was a big fish room I think I think I was in charge of like 50 different 50 tanks in the fish room and I was, you know, even to this day, I'm pretty familiar with tropical fish and I was really tripping out because a whole bunch of the fish that I saw when I did it that one time, these are all fish that I'm used to seeing in the fish tank. Yeah. Betas, tetras, <laughs> yeah. all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh -huh. It was really bizarre to me. And the clown knives, of course. And I was just tripping out. It's always interesting. There's usually snakes mixed in there. Mm -hmm. um, Water snakes. Yeah, aquatic leeches. Yes. Those are the things Ugh. that aren't, aren't fun. But no. um, all kinds of stuff, you know, the, uh, water scorpions and beetles. Yes, and, yes. Oh, man, they all kinds of crazy a stuff. Big one, big, big water bugs. Yeah, water bugs, yes. big ones. So 
Um, so all that stuff happened while I was gone, um, while I wasn't there with you. And then when I was there with you, we focused mostly on the house stuff. Yes. There's so many little yeah. projects and things mm -hmm. that we had to do. Um, but one of the evenings in particular, <laughs> it rained late in the afternoon and into the evening, and then the rain stopped. Termites start flying out of the yeah. holes. They come to the house where the lights are going, and all the toke geckos come out to feed. So I had a lot of fun because I wanted to see if I could get these toke geckos to eat from my fingertips. Mm -hmm. And uh, her family was strangely entertained by the foreigner, <laughs> you know, I, well, by Dan, their son-in-law, on, no on all fours. Uh, <laughs> catching these termites, <laughs> these wing termites, and feeding the toke geckos. But when I did it successfully multiple times, then they were kind of like, oh, this guy's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't get bit. Well, they never feed them, like uh, put the food right into the gecko's mouth like that. They never do that, you know, my parents then. Yeah, they're just living there, yeah. eating whatever it is uh, they eat. And uh, by him doing that, they seem like, a, it's really surprised them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, us foreigners, we do a lot of things that surprise <laughs> those guys, I'm sure. So, very interesting mm -hmm. time. Um, lot, you saw a lot of really cool stuff, and I'm really excited because in the future, when I'm putting in weeks and months there, I'm going to have the opportunity to see all this stuff, all this crazy wild stuff. So... I'm very much looking forward to that, but this gives you guys kind of a little taster of what it's like in that surrounding area and kind of what I'm in for. And for anybody that comes out to visit us, um, these are the things that you can potentially see. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. I don't know if this, if you guys found this entertaining or not. <laughs> I got Apple in the video, which a lot of you guys are requesting. So we did that for you. We did the, the two-person deal here uh, for the channel. So anyway, that is it for now, you guys. I just wanted to, to find a way to share all this video material with you. I thought it was really cool. Mm -hmm. It kept me super entertained while we were separated. I was always looking forward to checking my Facebook Messenger to see all these different videos and so the house construction was okay to see on video that was that was good but i always look forward to seeing all these weird video yes. clips of all this animal stuff because that's what really makes me excited so all right you guys thank you for watching see you again soon take care see ya